me to hone and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm recording a Q&A video. That's because my channel today, Sunday, May 13th, has become three years old. I'm also closing in on 20,000 subscribers, so there's two milestones. And as a result, I asked people on YouTube and Twitter uh, to submit questions for me to answer. Just, you know, if there's things you wanted me to talk about. And people did, and we're going to answer several questions in today's video. One question that I got a lot of is basically, why did you decide to create a YouTube channel? And that's kind of a good question. It's sort of thinking back three years, why did I decide to? Well, I was enjoying watching content creators on YouTube and I just thought to myself, you know, I could do this. I could start trying to do this. Um, the channel started with me mostly doing one weekly draft video and I also did like uh, budget modern competitive decks and standard competitive decks and I did some commander. I did a whole bunch of different stuff. I didn't do the top tens interestingly until a few years later, um, but I really love drafting and, you know, recording drafting, uh, to me is a lot better than just like playing a draft alone. It sort of adds the communal element to drafting that doesn't exist if I were just playing a draft on Magic Online alone. And uh, so to me, it was just fun to record drafts. Um, and, you know, it sort of became a thing that I did a lot of, started doing set reviews. Um, you know, I've gotten better at Limited, I think, in the three years I've been doing this because I've drafted much more seriously and much more frequently. So it's been good for me. But, you know, that's basically the reason I decided to start a channel. I was like, you know, I, you know, I didn't think I would ever make any money with it or anything. I just wanted to, uh, you know, have content, make content for people to look at. And uh, people have. I mean, it's been slow growing, certainly. Uh, after my first year, I only had a thousand subscribers. So, you know, after my second year, I think I had... 10,000. So it, it is very exponential. To those of you that have young YouTube channels, uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> it moves very slowly in the early going. Um, but if you keep up a, a strict schedule, which I have for the most part, um, people will come, you know. So another question I got several times is when did you start playing Magic and how? I started playing during Urza's Saga, which was a long time ago. How old was I? I was probably 11 when Urza's Saga came out, I think. I think it came out in 1999. Uh, so that tells you how old I am now, which is 29, but, um, so I started playing then, and I think like a lot of people, when you first start playing Magic, and especially when you're young and your friends are all young, like I wasn't taught by an older player, I lived in a small town where there wasn't really like a Magic scene to speak of, like in public anyway, I'm sure there were people playing at their houses and stuff, uh, we got the rules completely wrong, like we thought counter spells, and it, this kind of makes sense to be fair, because, but we thought counter spells like redirected spells, for example, um, we thought you could just put all your land into play at the beginning of the game, things like that. And over time, especially once the internet became more of a place for uh, magic content, um, you know, it, it, we figured out how to play and played a little more competitively. But uh, so that's when I started playing. Um, I was actually playing, I think, yeah, it was Pokemon at the time. And I just thought the Urza Saga packs looked cool. And I think I got like a gift card for my birthday. And I, for the place that sold cards in my town, which was Hastings, if you've ever, I, they're not all over the country. So I grew up in New Mexico, though, and we had them. And um, I decided to buy magic cards instead of uh, Pokemon cards, basically. And that's how it started. Another question is, do I play Commander? Uh, and what's my favorite Commander? I do play Commander sometimes, a lot less than I used to. As I mentioned earlier, I actually used to make a Commander deck tech video every month. They're still on my channel. Not such good, so good of sound quality because it was before I kind of, uh, you know, sort of invested in the channel. I <laughs> used Patreon to like, you know, now I have a real microphone and stuff. So I don't play Commander as much as I used to because Limited has just become, you know, I was always addicted to it and now I'm really addicted to it. And most of my free time for Magic is spent either making top 10 videos or recording drafts basically <laughs> so it's harder to find the time but my favorite commander i don't know i always really liked uh karn silver golem um to go back to a previous question that was the first player i ever opened in urza saga and he's been one of my favorite cards ever since you may have noticed when i play magic online he's my avatar um it's not because i play tron and modern or something it's because i uh like the card karn silver golem um, I like combining him with Mycosynth Lattice and just blowing up all my opponent's lands. That's always hilarious. Uh, but he can do a lot of other wacky things too. You know, he makes any artifacts you have. I'll probably, hopefully, I'll put Karn up on the screen. But he makes any artifacts you have into creatures um, and things like that. He's just, he is colorless, so it's a challenge too. And people don't often play colorless commanders. That, so it's, it's a fun, unique deck, I think. 
So the next question isn't actually a magic question. It's about um, another hobby of mine, which is uh, bird watching and helping birds, basically, in my local community here, uh, injured ones, and I help to take them to a place where they can get rehabilitated. And somebody asked me that I'm, you know, I've mentioned that I like birds and I'm a bird watcher. What is the most exciting uh, bird sighting I've ever had? Well, interestingly, this one's exciting in part because of the weird timing of it. Um, it is uh, the hoopo, which is a real bird. Sometimes pronounced hoopo. You can actually see my river hoopo uh, print behind me. Um, and it was really weird because that was when, was it Amonkhet? I think it was Amonkhet. It was either Amonkhet or the set after. <laughs> Forgotten their names already. It wasn't that long ago. But uh, it was when it was spoiler season. And I was in uh, Israel last summer, Jerusalem specifically, doing some research for my dissertation. And... Uh, I I actually lived in Israel, just, you know, sharing some stuff about myself. From 2013 to 2014, uh, the academic year, I went there to study Hebrew and do some other research for my dissertation and things like that, because I needed Hebrew for my uh, my area of research. And um, I wasn't an avid bird watcher last time I was there. It's something I developed uh, since meeting my fiance, who I met shortly after I came back here. We both sort of together developed this interest in birds. And uh, but the most exciting one I had was, again, the hoopo in Israel, um, because I'd never seen one before or knew anything about them. But I saw these weird looking birds, which basically look like the art on the uh, card. Um, they have, we uh, you know, like a frill on their head that they can push forward. They're very colorful. Um, and I saw it before River Hoopo got spoiled. And I was like, these are really cool birds. And I started seeing them all over the place. That's something that kind of happens when you're a bird watcher. You start noticing all these birds hiding in plain sight that you never really thought about. Um, and like two days after I sort of found out about this weird bird, uh, River Hoopo was spoiled. And not only was it spoiled, it was like my exact favorite kind of magic card. Um, you know, if you've watched my drafts, you know, generally I like grindy formats the most. I'll play anything because I'm an addict, but I like grindy formats more. I'm really enjoying Dominaria for that reason. I like Masters 25 a lot for that reason. And, uh, so it was the exact kind of card I like between having art that I liked and having being like a grindy fun card for the limited format. Um, so it was really weird. So it sort of connects to magic. What was probably my most exciting bird sighting just because of the weird timing. Cause I was like, wow, I literally know what a hoopo is from two days ago and it's been spoiled. So I think that's my most exciting bird sighting and I managed to connect it to magic even though it had nothing to do with it. Another question was, do I play constructed or do I just play limited? Um, other than EDH, which I play basically on rare occasions these days, I don't play constructed anymore. I used to, you can see old deck techs of mine. Um, I guess the standard ones are kind of useless now because I haven't done it for like a year, more than a year, but the modern ones might still be useful. <laughs> um, and uh, so I don't really play constructed anymore. I just find limited, I'm find limited to be much more interesting and sort of uh, there's a lot of replay value um, in most limited formats. It's not always true. Uh, coming off of Rivals of Ixalan, there was a little less, but um, yeah, I just like it the best. I'm, it doesn't hurt that it's basically the format that I'm best at, so that sort of uh, makes me want to do it more. Uh, you know, I'm just not as good at constructed. Um, I enjoy limited a lot more anyway, so. So another non-magic question is why did I get a degree in history, which is a question I've received a lot over the last like 11 years. I guess it's been 11 years from my bachelor's to the PhD that I have now just recently received. Um, yeah, 11 years. I've always liked um, history. Uh, as a kid, I watched lots of documentaries on the History Channel back when it had actual history on it and wasn't like ancient aliens and stuff. And so I just developed a, a love for it. And um, I was actually a huge underachiever in high school. I was just not interested in trying to succeed or anything like that. And uh, when I went to college, I went to a small liberal arts college um, in New Mexico. And, um, you know, I found my passion there, really. Um, it was, you know, I, I took history courses. I knew I liked history. I didn't know I wanted to major in it. But I ended up deciding to, even though basically all you can do with a history degree is get basically the same jobs you could get with no degree. But I knew I wanted to continue to where I am today, which is having a PhD. Um, and uh, now the other question people asked sort of is like, what am I doing now with my life? And the answer to that is that I am going to be an adjunct professor this next year um, at uh, a university near where I live now. And... Um, I'll be teaching European history classes. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully it's really hard. The, the job market in humanities, especially and in academia in general, is difficult. There 
are way more people with PhDs than there are jobs available, at least full-time jobs available. And so this year I applied for jobs, about 60 of them. And uh, I got two interviews, which you know was good experience, but didn't get a single job. And part of that was I wasn't done with my PhD yet. And part of that was that I have not as much teaching experience as someone who's been out of, you know, who's been had their PhD for a year, because I'm going to teach all next year and get a lot of experience. Um, and so far, I've taught some, but not as much as I would like I'm teaching a course on the Crusades right now, actually. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, what I'm going to do with my degree is be a professor, hopefully, <laughs> apply for more jobs this year after I have more experience, and hopefully things work out for me. Another question related to YouTube, and I sort of answered it some earlier, is what was the hardest thing about starting your channel? The hardest thing is just like, real, like how slow it goes in the early going. Um, I think it took me like three or four months to get to 100 subscribers, and that was a big deal, but sometimes it was a little like, you know, my videos are getting like 100 views. Why am I doing this? <laughs> Luckily, it was fun for me, and that's why I did it. I kept doing it, but it was sometimes a little frustrating. It was like, you know, hard to fun get hard to get views or in the early going and my sound quality and stuff like that was bad. And I didn't know much. I didn't really know what I was doing at that point, to be frank. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's the hardest thing. Growth is slow in the early going. If you can keep up a consistent schedule, I mean, getting to 20,000 ish subscribers in three years is doable. Um, so especially I mean, you know, you have to find sort of what your what your niche or niche is a lot of people. <laughs> One of the more annoying comments I've ever gotten, just to answer a question that wasn't answered, is uh, on one of my videos, I said niche, and everyone was like, no, it's pronounced niche. You can pronounce it either way, guys. Either way, either way, for example. Anyway, <laughs> so you do have to find something that, uh, you know, is your is your niche, if, if you must. And, um, you know, for me, it ended up being limited in magic history. Both things I'm pretty passionate about. It's basically what the top tens are. Mostly is about the history of magic and the, the drafts and stuff are, are the other thing I focus on. Another question I got, this one by Orjav Dunn, who has a really sweet YouTube channel uh, called They Said We Said. He does more than magic content, but he does do magic content that I think uh, most people are missing out on. He interviews content creators. He recently interviewed The Professor, for example. Basically has sort of like a talk show format, and that's pretty cool. But he asked, where do I see magic content in five years? Well, uh, that's a good question. I think, I hope, Matt drafts won't be on Magic Online anymore, basically. Um, I think they might be. But if they do, I hope there's a newer client, something that's sort of akin to uh, Arena. Because, you know, Magic Online is not the greatest thing for people to watch. Uh, it's, you know, it's not nearly as exciting as watching, like, Hearthstone, for example. And Arena is sort of filling that void. But, I, you know, on Arena, it looks like drafts are going to be AI and things like that. And I don't think that appeals to me as much as actually drafting against real people. I'm definitely going to record some Arena drafts some, at some point in the new, near future, but not just yet. So that's the biggest thing. I'm hoping there's a different platform to draft on in five years than Magic Online. Um, other than that, it's sort of hard to predict where content creation will be. I'm sure there'll be more, I mean, you know, over time there's more and more big YouTube channels, influential YouTube channels, and I'm sure there'll be more of them within five years. Some people probably haven't even started their channel yet, who those, who will be, you know, at the top of, of creation at that point. But other than that, other than wanting, you know, Magic Arena-esque thing or an improvement to Magic Online, it's hard to predict much else. So I think the last question I'll address is what is my favorite Ravnica guild slash cons, tri uh, you know, wedge or whatever they are, shards? I don't know. Um, my answer is sort of like, like, I do have a favorite, you know, if I'm being honest. I love blue-green. They usually have some of the sweeter decks and limited grindy slow decks with crazy good signposts and commons like River Hoopo. I often enjoy drafting it the most, but it really depends on the limited format, really. I'm not the kind of person who's like, you know, I'm all about Orzhov, or I'm all about Red, or I'm all about Jeskai. Um, I think as a limited player, I sort of get less attached to those things, maybe, than other people. I There are definitely, like, you know, in the actual limited format we're talking about, of the tribes, I probably enjoy drafting, like, Mardu the most, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to say you know, I, I like one the most. And in Ravnica, I probably liked um, the uh, Simic the most, blue-green, maybe blue-red too, is that is it? Um, both of those I liked a lot, but like in Dominaria right now, 
and you know uh you know i really enjoyed black green and other various other color combinations it just depends on the set i don't have like a specific color identity that i'm really into or anything like that so that does it for this q a video maybe i'll do another one if people really enjoyed this one and uh i'll answer some more questions uh obviously because that's what a q a video is um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like this video so others can enjoy it too. And don't forget to subscribe um, if you want to catch a bunch of limited content and MTG Top 10s. This is a good place for both.